Hi, today I want to look at a game where I am playing Dwight against the player under the alias Battle. This was a 5 minute auto pairing game played on the Internet Chess Club on the 17th of January 2010. My rating was 2143 and my opponent's rating was 1928. In this position, black is up a pawn and has a bishop for a knight. Black's position is completely dominant. His bishop completely blocks the activity of my rooks and is easily the strongest minor piece on the board. With the rooks still on the board to complement this bishop, white has serious king safety issues. In addition, the dark squares around white's king are highly vulnerable. Nevertheless, I played on in hope that my opponent would play inaccurately and perhaps concede a draw. Here, my opponent played b6. Rook g7 was best here, controlling the only unblocked file. White's ability to control this file is hampered as black controls the g1 square. Black will aim to double on the g-file with a clear advantage. My opponent played b6. Black is playing too leisurely, giving white the op opportunity c to capture the open file. I played knight b3, c5, rook g2, taking control of the file. Castle's queenside, knight c1. The knight couldn't do anything on b3, so I withdraw it. It has potential prospects on d3, which eyes the e5 pawn. Here, rook dd7, b3, rook dg7 seems like a good plan. White can't, de White can't simply defend with rook dd2 here due to bishop e3, forcing rook takes g7, rook takes g7, rook d1. And now rook g3 is crushing as white's pawns are defenseless. In the game, my opponent instead played bishop e3. Rook takes d8 check, king takes d8, rook g8 check. This immediate check is useful as it forces the king to obstruct the black rook's access to d7. King d7, knight d3, bishop, b bishop d4, b3. With this, with this last pawn move, white's pawns are now completely invulnerable to the black bishop. King c6, h4. My idea with this move is to control the g6 square after h4 to h5 and also allow a path for my king to move in via h3 and g4. Here I had a look at 31 h5 which aims to seal my king out of the black camp. The disadvantage of this move is that it leaves the square g5 open for the rook. Nevertheless, my computer believes black is slightly better after rook g5, king d6. In the game, my opponent played a5. Locking the pawns on dark squares is not ideal, but the move break b5 didn't have much merit either. Here, my computer prefers h5 when king b7 leaves black a touch better. In the game, I played 32 a4. And here, Rook d7 may be troublesome for white. White has no choice but to seek his own counterplay with rook g6 check, king b7, rook e6. But here black has bishop a1, knight takes e5, rook d2 check, king h3, h5, with a clear advantage due to the var variety of factors including white's weak king, his weak pawns on b3 and f3, and the fact that bishops are normally stronger than knights when there are rooks on the board. Instead, my opponent erred by playing 32 king d6. Rook g6 check. Again, I take advantage of the free check, which blocks the black rook's, the black rook's view of d7. King e7, h5. This cements the white rook on g6 and guarantees the path h3 and g4 for white's king. King d7, king h3, king e7, king g4. Here, black resigned, and you can see why. His rook, was, his rook is completely passive, and white's rook controls the only unblocked file. His e5 pawn is un his e5 pawn is vulnerable, and white's king appears to be entering the position through f5. However, however, the story doesn't end there. At the time, I felt my opponent's resignation was somewhat premature, and I would have played on if I had a choice. Just so, uh, just so I could find out how things would continue. It turns out my hunch was justified. After a move like bishop c3, white has absolutely no way to make progress. For example, king f5, rook f7 check. 
and the White King is forced back. Ribka gives the position where my opponent resigned as completely equal with an assessment of 0, 0.00. This was a surprising finish to a game where I was clearly worse in the middle game. Often players appear to get lucky if they play on in a worse position with determination. But this is mainly because it is very difficult, even at grandmaster level, for a player with the advantage to not slip up somehow. Obviously, I didn't deserve a win here, but even a draw was a fair result, if you remember the clearly worse position that I began this video with. Thanks for watching this video.